As you can see from the objectives, uh, we're going to take a look at Rolle's theorem. Um, before we do that, we're going to review the extreme value theorem, which is uh, the video that I made uh, previously to this. If you are in my class, you can turn to page 3 in your packet, and um, I would encourage you to stop the video at this point, complete the warm-up, and answer those questions because it gives you an opportunity to see if you remember and understand the concept of the extreme value theorem before you go on to roll theorem. So again, stop the video, do the warm-up, and then uh, start the video again and see how you did. All right, the extreme value theorem from the warm-up is an it's called an existence theorem. So let's pull that out of the way. Extreme value theorem is an existence theorem. Uh, the extreme value theorem only applies, and this is where we're looking for the conditions. The conditions of the extreme value theorem is that you must have a continuous function, and it must be continuous on a closed interval. So if those two conditions do not apply, then the extreme value theorem doesn't apply. If those two conditions are met, that you have a continuous closed interval, then the extreme value theorem makes a promise or a guarantee, or it guarantees that something is going to exist, and that's why it's called an existence theorem. The extreme value theorem guarantees that if the conditions in number two are met, then there is should an A maximum, and we're talking absolute, not a local, and a minimum, again, the absolute. Remember, the absolute maximum is the highest y value, and the absolute minimum is the lowest y value. Now, problem number four is going to move us on into Rolle's theorem, which is a very easy theorem. Um, so I have plotted two points, and notice uh, that both of the points have the same y value. So they both have a y value of 3, and I've given you a challenge, and the challenge is to sketch a graph of a continuous differentiable, there should be a comma there, continuous differentiable function with the given endpoints with the condition that the derivative is not allowed to be 0 anywhere on your function. So we have to have a continuous function, it has to be differentiable on that interval, um, and the derivative cannot be zero on the interval. Well, the ways that you could connect point A to point B are, you could go straight across, but that gives you a horizontal segment where the derivative is zero. That breaks condition number three, so that won't work. Another way to connect point A to point B is to go up, and at some point, if it goes, if you go up, you have to go back down. Well, then that gives you a local, and in this case, an absolute maximum. And at that uh, peak, the derivative is zero, so that the the criteria falls apart. Now, you might be thinking that you could do something like this, where you have a sharp turn and the function is not differentiable. Um, at that value, and you have you do have a continuous interval, but now the function is not differentiable at this point, so you have broken that condition. Uh, the third possibility of connecting those two points would be go down, and at some point what goes down has to come up, I guess that's the saying, or goes up has to come down the other way around. Anyway, um, and the derivative here is zero. So the bottom line is that it is impossible to connect those two points on a continuous and the important part differentiable function and to make the derivative not equal to zero. This is an impossibility. And the reason that it's impossible is because of Rolle's theorem. Now we already know, and these theorems are very important, and I just I can't stress enough that you have to know the conditions of the theorem, not just what's going to happen, but the conditions, because you don't apply the theorem if you don't meet the conditions. So the first theorem of calculus, not the first one, but the one that we've encountered in this section, is the extreme value theorem. Um, you've got to know the conditions, and that was in the warm-up, and you've got to know the guarantee, promise of a high Y and a low Y. Rolle's theorem is illustrated in number four of the warm-up, and this is really a, what I call a duh theorem, because if you think about it, it just makes common sense. 
first condition is that you have to have a closed interval just like the extreme value theorem so you kind of want to learn these their similarities and their differences the second condition is that, you, that the function must be continuous on the closed interval so those two conditions are just like the extreme value theorem now here's where things change for Rolle's theorem only the third condition is that the endpoints of your closed interval must have the same y value so when you come back up here and you look at my warm-up when I was kind of setting you up here these two endpoints had exactly the same y value so that is a condition of Rolle's theorem if your endpoints have different y values then this theorem doesn't apply so you wouldn't worry about the promise the fourth condition is that the function must be differentiable on the open interval that means inside of the closed interval not worrying about the endpoints so these two conditions condition one condition number one and condition number two they also apply to the extreme value theorem but condition three and condition four they apply only to Rolle's theorem but you have to meet all four conditions now if all of these like the the perfect storm is in place if all four of these conditions are true are met then the promise is whoops I thought I clicked that let me get back here then the promise or the guarantee or the there's the guarantee that there is a value of X where the derivative is zero now if there is a value of x where the derivative is zero then at that value just to review something from the last video then there is a critical number but not that's not any not a big deal for Rolle's theorem all right let's take a look at the examples and these are also in your packet and our job is to determine whether or not Rolle's theorem applies and if Rolle's theorem does apply or does not apply determine which condition is not met so the closed interval is from a oops edit undo so the closed interval is from a to b so we're only looking from here to here in that interval we well first of all we definitely have a closed interval so that's perfectly fine and we can see that the function is continuous on that closed interval there's no breaks gaps or holes but look what's coming next is the function differentiable inside the interval no because the derivative at zero is undefined or there's no derivative at zero um, because of that sharp term so roll serum is not met I don't worry about the conditions or the I don't worry about the promise because it falls apart and I don't have to check oh well let's go ahead and f of a is equal to f of b the y values are the same so every condition was met except for the function being differentiable therefore Rolle's theorem does not apply so does not apply all right let's take a look at number two um, we have our closed interval which starts here and stops here so we can go ahead and say that f of a is equal to f of b in other words the endpoints have the same y value we have a closed interval the function is continuous on the closed interval and the function is differentiable inside of the interval so Rolle's theorem does apply and by looking at the graph you can see that <clears throat> inside that interval there are two places where the derivative is zero the derivative is zero here and the derivative is zero at uh, this low point letter C we're starting the graph here and we're stopping the graph here so and again I would do these by yourself and then check them but just to make sure you're understanding the conditions do we have the same Y value at the endpoints yes we do it, do we have a closed interval yes we do is the function continuous on that closed interval yes it is there are no breaks gaps or holes is the function differentiable on the closed interval no it's not because the function is not differentiable here at this sharp turn so does Rolle's theorem does not apply 
Now, a question that we could ask ourselves is, does the extreme value theorem apply? Well, yeah, the, so we'll say roles does not apply, but the extreme value theorem does apply, which guarantees that there's an absolute max and there's an absolute minimum because all we need for that is a closed continuous interval, which we do have here. So be thinking about the differences between the theorems and which theorem applies, which theorem does not apply. All right, let's go to letter D. So in letter D, we are starting here and we're starting here, stopping here. So do we have a closed interval? Yes, we do. Do we have a continuous function on the closed interval? Yes, we do. Is the function differentiable on the closed interval? Yes, it is. Do the endpoints have the same y value? No, they don't. They have different y values. So, rolls does not apply. All right, let's go. Let's ask ourselves the same question we did for the extreme value theorem. Does the extreme value theorem apply? Well, we have a closed continuous interval, so the extreme value theorem does apply, which means that there is a highest y value and a lowest y value. The highest y value occurs here, lowest y value occurs at A. So that's Rolle's theorem. Very easy, big idea. Look for the conditions. And the promise from Rolle's theorem is that if you meet the criteria, then the derivative somewhere over the interval will be zero. Now, if you're in my class, again, just want to remind you that I have other resources that can help you. On my Edline page, I have, I've linked to another video that someone else has done. If you just need uh, Rolle's theorem, maybe heard from a different perspective, um, that, that's there for you.